Augustine. I create artwork under the name Coffee, K-O-F-I-E. And um, born, raised, and currently residing in the city of Los Angeles. And um, I was raised in West LA. Um, definitely inspired by the culture of that time period, which for me, growing up um, in graffiti, basically early 90s. I started writing coffee in 93. Yeah, I was raised on like that, that culture. Like I went to a high school where um, Melancholy Gypsies went to, and that was basically Merce and Eli and Scarab before they got into Living Legends. And like the year I graduated, they all started doing circles and ciphers at the school. I was like, really? Like I missed that? And then, um, but they knew of me because I, I pretty much started writing my name after I graduated high school, kind of a late start. But um, I used to paint at this yard called the Motor Yard and they used to go over there and smoke one and chill and my stuff was there. And one of my black books circulated the school after I'd left. And um, so they were all like knowing of me and I knew what they were doing and collecting their music, so. But yeah, like that classic underground LA foundations where I'm coming from. You know what, I do graffiti, but I can't say I'm a representative of it because I always kind of went into it with my own headset. Even though I was in crews and tried to do the classic stuff, I always kind of had this, my, I was always somewhere else, but I paid attention and respected and loved the original classic stuff. And being raised in West LA graffiti, you had, you were, I was in between. So there was the classic, that New York classic style, like transmorphed into like a West Coast blue crew, AWR kind of style. And then there was also the 213 style, which was more sharp, cleaner, straight lines, really linear and really focused stuff. So I was inspired by both of these genres. And then I, I didn't know where I fit. I knew I wanted to contribute, so it took me a while to get into it. I started doing characters initially. And I guess subconsciously what I was really trying to do was learn characters, learn how to cut and use these cans and learn technique. And I started with characters because that's what I used to draw in the books and I wanted to manipulate that onto a surface and add it with lettering. So, you know, it was, it was all development at that time. And this was also before European spray paint came into play, before magazines were coming into play, before the internet kind of expanded everything. So it was really pure and beautiful then. And I really appreciate that I grew up in that time period because it was like really classic before it became so accessible now. So I, that's kind of like my education on it. I, you know, I was there, I got to see it kind of grow and felt I kind of was able to contribute at an early time. It, 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 it just gravitated, definitely gravitated toward it. And you know, there's this young angst and there's this need to have a voice in some manner. And that was one way to kind of get a voice. And I'm not also coming from the whole, I'm not talking about tagging. I'm coming from a wanting to do burners and production mindset here. I'm not talking about like going out and vandalizing, which I, participated in, still do in essence, but I'm not here to communicate about that. I'm talking about the perspective I'm coming from as, as an artist, as a creative person. So when I'm communicating about graffiti, I'm talking about the actual process of building like productions and thought out plans and schemes and such. work for a number of years it's just gotten a lot more refined and tuned in the past five and um, the painting work that works on canvas was more something slightly relative to the work I'll do exterior on walls because it still focuses on the line the structure and this idea of balance and then playing off different colors gives it a different energy and a flow and I have to contrast those works against the collage work which you see it's all same artist, but you see there's different techniques. And again, it's pretty much just me being, giving you the chance to showcase different techniques and how those could play off the other artist's work. I'm, I'm always collecting works 
and well, I'm always collecting elements for artwork or I'm always collecting things just whatever what catches my fancy whatever I feel is relative to my style and aesthetic and um, you know I'm, I'm a bit of a harvester and collector I like old you know discarded things not everything but specific things usually in the um, office supply um, accounting drafting supply stuff architecturally inspired things um, papers from like the late 50s up to the, the 80s I like to incorporate it into my work and um, it, it, there's just this 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 feel of like an archaeologist like kind of discovering something and then in essence sharing it and incorporating it into your work that's I've always liked to do that I think it also comes from um, this headset of like a, a music producer or you're kind of or underground hip hop style music producer where you're kind of sampling elements incorporating them in your work, twisting them, truncating them up, chopping them up. And that's what I like to do. I like to construct and build things. And that painting style, the collage, is the best way I can visualize this thing I have in my head. And if I'm not going to do it like that, then I'm going to do it with uh, like electronics and build music up. So in a way, this is like my little audio visual interaction. But it, everything I do, bottom line, is always relative to the, the things that I love. And that's where I've kind of gotten to the point where I could live my life and incorporate all the things that I've always liked to do since my childhood and interweave them and mesh them together and create something that I feel like I need to get out of my system.